Coughs and cries could be heard coming from deep inside the woods on the west side of Evansville in the early 1900s. These sounds were coming from the Bainey Hospital, which was the place of healing for thousands of Midwest residents during this time. The hospital's physicians were desperately trying to find a cure for the fast-spreading disease of tuberculosis. Tucked away in a wooded setting on the west side of Evansville stood first a tent colony and later a collection of buildings. This complex would be the temporary home to thousands of Midwest residents. People came to this location seeking fresh air, relaxation, and treatment from the Great White Plague, tuberculosis. Tuberculosis is a bacterial disease that usually affects the lungs. It's a very small bacterium and a bacterium is uh, different than a virus in that a bacterium is able to live on uh, any kind of um, uh, material. Uh, you can grow it on uh, blood agar and things like this, whereas a virus has to live in living tissue. Uh, the other characteristic thing about it is that it has a capsule, and this capsule protects the uh, bacterium from um, be easily treated. Uh, if you uh, treat with certain antibiotics, that capsule uh, so, sort of guards against uh, the penetration of the antibiotic. So it takes about uh, four or five medications to cure it. TB can also affect lymph nodes, kidneys, bones, and joints. This disease is spread through the air when an infected person coughed or sneezed. So it's a very important disease that can present in many different ways. There's no characteristic way that it would present. Um, the most common thing would be uh, the, the cough that's chronic, just doesn't go away, chills and fever, and weight loss. And that's how we usually will find it, and then eventually they'll cough up blood. Tuberculosis was one of the leading causes of death in the early 1900s. Thousands of people in Evansville died from the Great White Plague between 1900 and 1920. The disease was most common in crowded inner cities with poor sanitation. Large numbers of immigrants arriving to the United States also posed a risk. In Evansville, outbreaks were becoming more common and many people were dying of tuberculosis. With the goal of tuberculosis prevention and treatment, the Vandenberg County TB Association led by Albion Fellows Bacon and John W. Bainey, created Bainey Camp Hospital in 1910. In 1909, Evansville had the largest tuberculosis death rate of any city in the country except Denver. There was an immediate need for a cure. Without the support of John W. Bainey, who served as Evansville's mayor from 1906 to 1909, Bainey Camp Hospital would never have existed. Instrumental in its founding, Bainey saved the hospital from being shut down in 1918. The hospital did not have enough funding to continue operating and needed $25,000 immediately. Bainey donated the money and then proceeded to donate $1,500 every year to fund the hospital. Bainey Camp Hospital began as a fresh air facility. A colony of tents with a few permanent structures occupied the grounds. Doctors believed that the fresh country air would cure their patients. Another reason the camp was located in an isolated area was to prevent the further spread of the disease. It was decided that Evansville needed a better way to care for the tuberculosis patients. That was where Bainey came in. He helped fund the money for the grounds and new buildings. The hospital soon became famous for its great treatment. Over the years, treatment for tuberculosis changed. It was always thought that fresh air was an important part of tuberculosis care. During the years of the tent colony, there was not a very high success rate of cures. Doctors were finding out that the fresh air was in fact causing the patients to catch other diseases like pneumonia. Pneumonia would cause the lungs to expand even more than they already had from tuberculosis, causing the patients to eventually die. As treatments began to focus more on medical procedures and less on fresh air and folk remedies, Bainey Camp became Bainey Hospital. The location of the hospital was a prime spot for isolation. 
when a person was suspected of having tuberculosis, they were taken away to the hospital to be sealed off from the rest of the community. Isolation was only the key for the people with tuberculosis. At the hospital, doctors were still searching for an effective way of combating the disease. Paul Krim's thorough croplasty seemed to be the answer. This procedure involved putting a sponge at the top of the lung and collapsing the lung. Any number of ribs could also be removed at this time. This procedure would not cure the patient, but it would help them survive longer. When the former superintendent of the hospital, George Mills, resigned in 1929, a new superintendent was needed. Dr. Paul Krim was appointed by Walter Light to be the new superintendent of the hospital. He was to take the position on June 1, 1929. Dr. Krim decided to become a tuberculosis doctor due to the fact that he contracted the disease while he was a medical corps man overseas during World War I. His unit was the last unit that arrived on uh, Armistice Day in La Havre, France, and so he was forced to spend six months in Paris, France. Then when he came back, he discovered he'd contracted TB, and so he went to Lake Cernak, and uh, he did his residency then in uh, uh, thoracic surgery there because he could work in the morning and the rest in the afternoon. Um, and then he married my mother. Uh, she was a nurse. And they moved to New Haven, Connecticut. He happened to see an, uh, an ad in the New England Medical Journal for a uh, hospital administrator and surgeon in Evansville, Indiana. And he got on the train one afternoon and rode all night and arrived uh, here at the CNI station was met by Mr. Walter Like. Mr. Like took. Dr. Paul Krim arrived with his family at Bainey Camp Hospital in 1929 from New Haven, Connecticut. After he received the job, the first thing Dr. Krim did when he arrived at the hospital was rename it the Bainey Hospital to put the focus more on treatment and healing rather than fresh air and outdoor activities. Dr. Krim had several roles at the hospital. He was the superintendent of the hospital, the head physician, the head surgeon, and he was involved in the maintenance. Dr. Krim visited every patient in the morning, then performed any needed surgery after that. Once he was done taking care of his patients, he would take care of his private practice from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m., then return back to the hospital. Under Paul Krim's leadership, the hospital grew to include six main buildings. The nurses' annex housed the nurses that worked for the hospital. It started out on the east side of Bainey Camp Road and was later moved to the west side. The old nurses' annex became Dr. Krim's new house. There was a lake behind the doctor's house named for Walter Lyke. In the middle of the lake stood an island where Dr. Krim hosted picnics for organizations such as the Rotary Club and the county commissioners. A pool located on the west side of Bainey Camp Road was used for treatment of patients until it was later learned that it was contributing to the spread of the disease. The pool was then used by the Krim family for recreation. Four out of six of the main buildings were connected by a series of underground tunnels. The service building, where meetings and gatherings were often held, was located on the west side. The service building also housed the kitchen. Linked to the service building by the underground tunnel was the main building. The main building was located on the east side of Bainey Camp Road. All the surgeries and operations were performed there. This was also the building that housed the most serious patients admitted to the hospital. The next building connected on the underground tunnel was the Bainey Building, which was located on the east side of Bainey Camp Road. This building was the oldest building on the hospital's campus. The Bainey Building was where the patients would go for recovery after surgery. The last building connected on the underground tunnel was the Mills Building. The Mills Building, which was located on the west side of Bainey Camp Road, was originally known as the Children's Ward. After the children were no longer cared for at the hospital, the Mills Building became the building that housed all the other patients that were not staying in the main building or the Bainey Building. Bainey Hospital holds a major spot in Vandenberg County's history. The hospital was a great example of what Evansville is capable of. 
Today, all the buildings have been torn down except for the service building, which is now being renovated into apartments, and the doctor's house, which is a private residence. The hospital itself may be physically gone now, but its story will forever live back in the woods on the west side of Evansville.